In this guide, I'm gonna cover the route for Journey Moon Lord on both random seed and seeded categories. Uh, we're gonna be looking at the route using bees to kill all the bosses. As this is the current meta route, uh, we down patch to dispatch to use it, and it will likely stay the superior version for a while. Right, uh, we're gonna start with random seed, and then I'm gonna also check the seeded route. Start. I'm gonna make two characters here because uh, at the start we need to uh, die once to get a tombstone, and we're gonna need that to make a graveyard biome uh, to craft the bees later. So I make two characters because I can die with one of them, relog, get on the second one, and then instantly pick up the tombstone without having to wait 10 seconds. Now in this run, I'm also gonna die, <laughs> not on purpose, a second time. Uh, that's just something I did, it was quite stupid, but that was not intended. Uh, now I'm gonna pick up the tombstone, well I already did, and then I duped it uh, with sand. That's uh, also one of the glitches in this version. So uh, I placed uh, a block of sand uh, above the tombstone. I'm not sure if it has to be on the left side, uh, and then I broke, uh, yeah, I just broke it. It's more easy to do when you break uh, the block below, because the tombstone itself takes a lot of hits, and then we just have two instead of one, and that's enough to research it. So we're gonna have enough now. I use some platforms to move around, and now I'm gonna enter this uh, cave. This looks like a combination of a real jungle entrance and a mountain cave because there's two ways and uh, let me just show you here. So this is what a real jungle entrance might look like. It's not always this wide, sometimes it's just a little hole uh, that leads into this big cave. So it's just... Uh, uh, really a vertical passage and what I think I got in that run was a mountain cave like this one and uh, the real entrance together so because this is all open uh, it kind of like over overrode the mountain shape of it you can kind of see a part of it and so we have both of them together and if you get one of those caves in the jungle, you can go down, but uh, you you want to make sure it's close to the actual jungle entrance because that one really goes down to the very underworld level, whereas this is kind of stops. Like if you go like that, that's where it stops, and you just have to rely on it connected to other caves. Uh, which can happen, but if you find one like at the start of the jungle, then it's not very likely that you will have this cave connect to the underworld, which is where we're going, because Wall of Flesh is gonna be the first boss. Uh, so yeah, I got a pretty good cave here, uh, and also I will, I went this side after I died because uh, I saw that there was a desert. Uh, and this is almost certainly an underground desert. Like you see, there's a fall. Uh, the underground deserts, they spawn like uh, relatively on the same level as the ground. Uh, well, it's pretty hard. It might be pretty hard to tell apart uh, the real desert and the underground desert. But when you do know it, uh, then you can be certain that uh, the jungle would be on the same side as this. So if you see a desert, you can usually just go uh, that side and you'll probably find the jungle. There are some really rare exceptions that uh, the underground desert will be on the opposite side, but that uh, seems to me more like a glitch in the world gem than anything. So a quick interruption. I figured I didn't explain the desert part nearly as well as I should have. I put up some examples of how you can tell apart underground deserts from fake deserts. Pause the video if you want to check it out. So yeah, I keep going this side, I find the jungle. And uh, now, 
I'm gonna find a rail shortly. Yeah. Uh, I first like to take the side of the rail that I think is less likely to uh, lead me to the underworld. Take me down. And that was the left side. So I get hives. 25 hive blocks is the amount I'm gonna need. We're gonna talk about that later. And then I go to the right side. And we're now moving down. Hermes boots, that will be quite useful if I don't get a goat school from Ball of Flesh. That is a really fast mount, but there's only a 25% chance drop to get it. In a perfect round, you obviously wanna rely on getting that. As you'll see later. But Hermes boots are really nice. So now I'm just moving down. Uh, I get some stone here because I don't have all the iron. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna need uh, 13 iron if I didn't have the anvil. Uh, 13 iron bars to uh, craft a heavy workbench and the anvil. So uh, you see, I'm getting some ore. Uh, I did pick up an anvil, so I only need like what uh, 24 uh, ores to make eight iron bars. And that's all I'm gonna need. Okay, make the bars. Now I can make the heavy workbench. And now we place seven tombstones. This is the amount you need to make a graveyard and to craft a beast. Okay, we research it. We get a full stack. And ball of flesh can be really tricky on random seed because uh, you really don't know where it's gonna spawn. Now I'm gonna place about 60 hives. 60, like 62, 64, I'm not sure. Uh, I think I placed 60 in this one, because you can see the amount. And then it spawned the guide, it, and hopefully it spawns less hungries. Like if you cap spawns with this, you're not gonna get uh, wall flesh spawned at all. If you leave like three uh, entity slots, and kill wall then you might not get any hungries but that's not even always that helpful you really just want the bees to be on the same level as one of the wall flesh parts as we'll see i'm killing the guide and when wall flesh spawned i made sure that it's on journey difficulty that's very important throughout all bosses and uh, because when it spawns on journey it's gonna have less hp and then i'm placing the bees on master mode and then, then I also changed difficulty to master. This is not to uh, make sure bees deal more damage because it doesn't matter. As long as they were summoned on master, they would do master damage. I'm changing difficulty to master to uh, make it so wall moves faster and also to make it so we get master mod drops, which, as I said earlier, God School is really good. So now it's gonna move faster. I get lucky and the eye just goes right on top of it. But uh, if it was like around here, and it would be clear that it, uh, the wall is not, um, the wall is not gonna hit the beast, then I would have to break the box and uh, have them follow me uh, into wall, and then it, it's gonna be really hard to uh, have the difficulty on master uh, and still have the beast kill it because. When it's low HP on master mode, it starts moving really fast, and you just have to hope that it, the bees kill it in one tick like they did here. And I did get the gold school this round, and that's gonna save a lot of time. Now you can see I also have a featherfall potion, and by holding up, uh, you pretty much stop falling. You st uh, fall very very slowly, um, and I'm. Basically flying with the girls too. So right here I'm, I broke an altar, one altar in corruption. Um, I choose corruption because it's easier to go down uh, to find the altar instead of having to go ar around the zigzags in crimson. Uh, and also if I found an altar randomly somewhere, not in the corruption, I could also break that and save some time. But that wasn't the case here. So I break an altar and then I summon mech bosses by switching the time to day and night and hoping they spawn. 
And then I place bees on master to kill them. So that's what we're gonna be doing to Max. And then when we get twins, and see if we get twins now. Taking a little while. Yeah, I, I get twins. And now we want to despawn the red eye. Because that's uh, the one is a bit uh, harder to kill. We despawn him by switching uh, to day while he's still off screen. Or if uh, he doesn't spawn further uh, than the green eye, then you have to like uh, wait for him to be above or to have momentum moving out of screen. And then you change it to daytime and have him fly off but leave the green eye around. Right, so kill just like that. Uh, Retinizer, the red eye, is a lot harder to kill because he dashes further and he doesn't really stop in the box. So even if he goes to half HP, he's just gonna fly past and then it's gonna be really hard to catch him with the bees. But the green eye, he dashes onto you and he kind of stays in the box even after going to second phase, uh, as we see right here. So it's a lot easier to kill him. And then for Prime, just spam the beast, wait for him to dash. Uh, we also change it to Master mode for all of those. Mm. It doesn't have to be Master, just Expert Plus to so get it back and there's a chance you get Dead Wings. So now I'm gonna boost myself with the hook and while I have momentum, I get on the Goat School and fly to the jungle. So there's something to keep in mind here. Uh, the corruption could be on the same side as the jungle. Uh, you would know that from going to jungle earlier. And if that's the case, uh, you might want to go to that corruption. And then uh, when you get the altar broken, you just uh, go up uh, back to the surface. Because you need to be on surface to summon mechs. And because we're going to the jungle now, that would save me some time. Uh, because uh, we're looking for Pantera. I have to go around the tree here. Uh, See, so yeah, if the corruption was close to jungle, I would just break an altar, go to the surface instead of recalling like I did there. And uh, yeah, I'll be closer to jungle that way. So as soon as I killed Max, I unfroze time and I set it to 24 times speed. Uh, so that there's a higher chance to get up on terrible spawns. You really need to make sure you don't forget that. Uh, so now I'm going down this cave. It's pretty important to locate the temple. It can be... It can ruin your runs if you don't find it. But uh, here we already know where the temple is. And uh, yeah, we found the bulb already. That was a really good run for bulb. Like, uh, this run uh, is the first place right now. The bulb is gonna be one of the hardest parts to uh, get to beat it. Because I found it really quickly. And then the tempo, as we'll see in a bit, wasn't perfect. Uh, but uh, I'll get to that. Now I place uh, bees in a little separate box. So they don't fly around and uh, don't get hit by like things we don't want. Especially in second phase, um, Pontera spawns a lot of those legal, like hungry like things, kind of like the wall of flesh ones. And if you just place the bees randomly, let them fly around, they'll go after that instead. And I just like to be safe and place them in a box and have the Pontera go into the box. And Pontera is the only boss that we specifically want to kill on the normal mode. Oh, journey doesn't matter uh, because that that way it doesn't drop a bag and instead it always drops a grenade launcher you want some kind of uh, real weapon for skeleton uh, that would be really helpful uh, you could kill skeleton with bees uh, but it's just a lot more clean like that so we get a guaranteed grenade launcher here because it's on normal uh, we also have rockets yeah now I'm gonna go into the temple entrance, but that's not uh, very often the case. Uh, like the temple could have been further to the right, and I would like go down here and hoik through the 
through the side and to the right or sometimes it's below uh no rather well if you're below the temple there's a chance that with increased reach in journey mode you could loot uh, the chest uh, with a cell and then also summon the golem if you are able to do that that saves a lot of time because golem can just uh, jump through the temple now he's gonna jump out of it uh, towards you and you can just kill him without going into the temple if that doesn't happen you can also hoik from below and you can also sometimes hoik from the side to get into the main room but here I'm right next to the entrance so I just walk in like that that is a place for potential time save uh, because as I said if the temple was above me I could have just uh, summoned one out of going into the temple but we could just like that uh, it doesn't matter if it's on master mode or not it's just uh, a little more clean if you have the bag you could uh, clean your inventory later to make sure you have enough uh, room to pick up the stuff. Uh, there's not much point in getting golem drops, but you could get like a heat tray, uh, the magic weapon. And because you have infinite mana and in journey, uh, it's one of the strongest weapons you can get for killing Skeletron. But that's only a few seconds time if you have the grenade launcher. We didn't get anything useful, so... Uh, I freeze the time to make sure it stays night, make a journey mode, and kill Skeletron just like that. You have to unfreeze time for Cotus to spawn, and as, as as long as you're off screen, even like one block off screen from where the tablet spawns, uh, the Cotus will spawn immediately. I don't have to be that far, so you see they spawn here, and now I'm gonna do a little setup for a consistent pure skip that we found recently. So let me just go over what pillar skip is. Uh, if you place uh, 200 bees or close to 200 bees, there's a 200 uh, NPC limit. And if you kill the cultist with uh, the spawns copped, then the pillars will not spawn at all. And that's what we're going for here. But uh, there's a little problem with bees. It's that even if you cap them, there's usually still one entity that cannot be filled with be by bees. And you have to use something else to cap it. Uh, so that you don't get one power. And I don't think I actually... Uh, I don't remember if I skipped power in this. I think I did actually. Yeah, I'm doing the consistent setup. So I should have skipped it. Okay, so I make two separate boxes. I stand on this specific height. Uh, I guess I'm going to link the guide to where I explain this specific setup. But basically, I stand on this height. And the cultist is going to go right here. He's going to take damage from the bottom beast, but not from the top box. Uh, I place eight hives. So that's just eight clicks. Uh, in the, the bottom one, is they're going to take him to very low HP. And when he's below half... Uh, then he can start using his uh, uh, Stardust attack, as well as some other attacks. And the Stardust uh, star one in particular, uh, that one counts as an enemy. It's an attack that is an enemy. And so we can use that attack to ensure uh, that the spawns are properly capped and we don't get even one pillar. So we do that. Now we change difficulty to journey, as we did for all the other bosses, so that he spawns with less HP, that's also critical. He spawns, we change to master, and now we fill the top box. So uh, we don't have a builder pot, uh, that is also uh, explained in the other guide that I'm gonna link. We don't have a builder pot, so he does the stardust attack once, spawns all the stars, and now the second time, you see he only spawns one star, because they're capped. Uh, the beast cannot properly cap, so there's one star spawning, and that one will fill the last entity slot. And now we can see, impending group of doom approaches, that means Moonlord spawned without any pillars. Uh, now this is also, this is not the most recent method uh, for killing Moonlord, but that is one way to do it. I make a separate box with like two hives. Uh, we kill them so that Moonlord can spawn, so that it's not completely capped. 
and then I send three platforms above the box with these master mode um, to have one or die. Uh, I'm gonna spin in a sec what this is for when he spawns. So now we have almost capped master mode bees here, and they're gonna attack the heart. So in this version, which we done patch one version earlier, uh, the bees can hit invincible enemies, and uh, pillars with a shield, as well as uh, Moonlord's heart, and I guess his eyes when they're close probably too. But uh, we care about Moonlord's heart. It's an invincible enemy, and bees can attack it. Uh, so we don't have to attack anything else, we just go for the heart. The uh, Muller dies, even though he's at this much HP. And now, as you can see, uh, we get the confirm message. And there's no... Uh, uh, there's no 10 second animation after he dies. And uh, that's because we got the animation skip. And we only recently figured out how it really works. So you see, we kill the heart, and uh, the heart dies once, and then there's a flash like that, there's a flash, and uh, when this flash finishes, the heart will get its uh, hitbox again, like a new heart appears. And then if we kill that heart a second time with bees, uh, then we skip the death animation, we pretty much kill the death animation. And let me just change the playback speed to normal. And as you can see, when Muller dies, he starts slowly floating upwards. And uh, the way to make this skip consistent is to build uh, a certain height of platform so that his heart is like low enough that after this flash he starts floating up and he doesn't, uh, like the heart doesn't leave the box. So if the hitbox uh, of the heart gets hit after the flash, then we instantly kill the death animation. And we skipped the 10 seconds. Uh, so, I uh, built three platforms. Uh, that way he spawns and consistently dies. But that's not even the new strategy. There's a faster way to kill him. Which will also be linked in the guide. There's a guide explaining the consistent power skip and the new Moonlord setup. Which, uh, basically in a few words, uh, we would uh, build a box around here. And then, uh, as you can see, like, let's see, uh, Muller is gonna spawn. Yeah, as you can see, he spawns above me, and then he goes down like that, and flings up and down. So we would build the box exactly where he spawns, and place bees there, uh, so he will die in like two ticks after spawning. Well, three or four. Uh, and also, we'll have the death animation work. So he will die like 4 or 5 seconds faster. So let's see, it's 28 seconds, and now he dies at 32. So uh, it would be like 4 seconds faster with that new setup. So that's normal mode, or random seed rather. Uh, let me see if there's something else I should explain. So yeah, Pantera Bull can be pretty bad RNG factor. Uh, the amount of time it, it takes you to spawn mechs is also very random. It's 1 in 10, I believe, to get a mech boss. So if you're flicking the day and night, and you don't get it for like 30, you're probably just unlucky. There's nothing wrong. Uh, you're not doing anything wrong, and you just got unlucky. You could get all 3 in like 3 clicks, obviously, but that's really <laughs> not very likely. So this is one place of like time save. But uh, it's pretty easy to get it within a like, decent amount of time. What Pantera, you never really know. You just have to hope you find it. You want to cover as much ground as possible. You could also open the map and see if there's a little pink 2x2 two two for the bulb. But uh, you just want to like explore the most open places in jungle. Maybe stick around uh, the temple. Or find the temple if you haven't found it already. That's also very important. Then you hope you get the bulb and obviously don't forget to unfreeze time. So it's 24 times. 24 times is likely to get a bulb. And uh, um, when I'm actually summoning next, let's see in a second. Obviously don't forget to change it to 
journey after you kill the mech because you want uh, all the bosses to spawn on journey with less health so now you can see i'm taking those two in particular this is noon and this is the start of night so the, the reason i'm taking start of night is because if i was clicking like middle of the night and i accidentally clicked day after prime spawned and he would have enraged and i would have to log out and uh, i would have to log out and look for them again but if i'm clicking the start of night then they don't actually spawn you just get the message that they're coming the green message they don't immediately spawn and so if you accidentally click day after the message appears and that's uh, obviously bad because you missed the potential max spawn but at least you you're not gonna have to log out and uh, to avoid the enraged uh, prime he's not gonna kill you because you have journey mode but also you you can't do anything other than log out because he there's no way to kill enraged prime he doesn't get unenraged uh, if you switch it tonight so that's why i'm doing uh, noon and the start of night they're also very close the two buttons so this is uh, like the the way to make sure you you don't get that even if you accidentally skip it let's just see and uh, the probes it don't really matter yeah i believe i'm getting prime next let's just see All right yeah so i got the green message my curse energy is instinctively going to the day, but I don't actually click it. I react fast enough, and then I have to click midnight for the boss to actually spawn. So if I'm doing it this way, that's what I'm going to have to do with all of them. And you can also get confused with um, the solar eclipse. Because uh, when you switch to day, you could obviously get a solar eclipse, and that also sends a green message. But uh, that message is shorter, and also the it's not gonna be bright so like the night is pretty dark the day is very bright and if you get your eyes to like remember that it's supposed to be bright when you click day but it isn't with the solar eclipse that's one way to oh, uh, realize what's going on and it's that it's not a mech solar eclipse is gonna get a bit confusing so right here also i get twins you can see the red eye on the minimap it's uh, far enough that it's off screen, but the green one is not. So I just click uh, noon, and boom, it's despawned. Sometimes it's spawned uh, like right next to each other, or the red eye, can, red eye can even be closer. Oh, as, as I said earlier, and so you have to wait for them to like get stay still, and then you uh, switch it to day, have them slowly float upwards, and then you switch it back to night just in time so the green eye green one survives uh, you really want the green ones to be around all uh, right I, didn't, I think that's everything um oh there's also a rare glitch that when the twin uh, dies you, you just lose your hotbar completely you can't see anything and that's when you have to kill bees so you want to make, make sure you have bombs or grenades on your hotbar so like that's a glitch where you can't even log out to fix it you just lose your entire hotbar and plus pressing F11 or whatever, that doesn't help. Just some weird glitch with twins. It rarely happens. So, but if you have bombs, uh, you can throw the bombs, kill the bees and you'll get your hotbar back. You will unsoft lock. Uh, that's just a little safety measure. There's also something I didn't have to do in this round, but it's very useful on um, a random seat so i guess i should explain that uh, let's get afro man's run um, trying to find it there's a way uh, if you have to dig down which you have to do quite a lot in random seat uh, there's a way to dig twice as fast and he he's uh, up against the wall he's up against the wall and uh, he's hooking continuously to this wall and going downwards uh, and also he's digging like a one wide hole so i think you can see it in a second yeah 
So he's digging this one white hole. He keeps uh, hooking downwards, and basically he's hooking uh, down this little path, and he has to dig uh, only half as much as he usually would. This is a very useful strat. Just need like one block here. You can hook down and go digging. You can also do it on the right side. Um, and you can also go back upwards with this. Uh, it's just a very useful time save in jungle. Right, now let's move on to Seated. Which is currently 6 minutes 40. Um, and this run I used the pretty safe strat. Uh, there's a conch world. And there's the main world. So I'm going to be making two characters again. Uh, I start by killing myself for the tombstone again. I pick it up. Now we go on the conch world. Uh, get the tombstone duped. Uh, right. So there's a way. Uh, like if you break the pots in this world. You might get scarab bombs. Which are useful, but as, from what I found, uh, it's really not useful. Uh, as we'll see you later, I'll explain what they're for. So here we duped, uh, sorry, we looted two chests. There's one here, and then you can see there's a, a little thing right here. It doesn't let you through, but you can just hook through this. Uh, I loot boots and get some iron. See all the iron we need. The main world doesn't have any iron. And then we also get a conch in the second world. So this is the main world. Uh, we just run to the right with boots. Do all the menu we need while running. Uh, like we want to change it to night, freeze time, make it 24 times speed. Uh, the 24 times the, like, like the time speed for Pantera. And we just freeze. And there's all this menu you have to do. Uh, while running so that you don't have to do it later here we'll do the building pot and wood also go around uh, you don't have to do this at all uh, you don't have to go around let me just show you you can uh, dig down these two blocks and just jump down that's gonna be faster and that saves time twice because we go back here in the hard mode so just keep in mind that you always want to dig down here Instead of going around, I uh, loot bombs, and uh, that's uh, yeah. I guess that's necessary with this route. And you got hooked through here, or just dig down. This uh, chest has a TP potion. If you wanna try to get really lucky and teleport to the dungeon, you could uh, loot this potion, but it's uh, not necessary when you have the conch. Because it will only take 10 seconds to get to the dungeon. So we just fall down. Just follow this path. Grab some platforms. Now we bomb through here. Through the lava. And also get 25 blocks. See how I did. Yeah. Uh, I might want to show another video. Um, where I did this a little bit better. A more recent run so this is the same house for wide and uh, I use the hive walls to make the oh the walls I'm gonna craft the hives fly up for a bit guide moves in and basically ever anywhere here uh, you, you can do the bees and the wall is gonna spawn I, I believe you need like 45 or so uh, hives for the wall to die mm, Yes, 45 or so is enough So you can place them before or I'm gonna show you a, a different way later Where um, uh, I killed the uh, summon wall first and then place them that also can work But for this I just place them first And I wait for the wall to ram into the uh, Bees which it will over every time do uh, This is is consistent with how the wall spawns. Now we get a gold school. If you're going for a really good time, you might want to get the gold school because it saves quite a bit. Uh, but you have boots and you have the conch, it's not absolutely necessary. If you're just getting into this category, you don't have to get the gold school. And 
Let's continue. Rico, go to the left to break an altar so that we can spawn mix. Uh, epic times of wood. So I believe I would run out of wood if I don't blow up a tree. So uh, I did that at some point. I'm not even sure if that's a tree. But yeah, you you can only loot one chest with wood here, and that's enough to last you to the wall of flesh. But later you want to build something like this, and there are also the boxes for cultist. So you might want to bomb a tree, uh, no matter what route you're taking. So I'm just gonna spawn mix like usually. We spawn one. Let's skip through. A Rico out of the box. You could also break it uh, on the top and just fly out. But I Rico out. And unfreeze time. Change it to journey mode for Pantera. And I, again, I would jump. The, uh, I would just fall down here. Uh, instead of going around. In the most recent version. Now we go down. Uh, so the seeds. Uh, seeds have specific Pantera bulb locations where the bulb can spawn and the, those bulb locations are like more consistent and less consistent it's very rare to have a bulb spawn like actually consistently on or on a seed but on this uh, on this seed it's very consistent this one under the temple a very convenient place and it's a pretty good chance that you get one here break the bulb uh, you don't have to you don't have to break, uh, make a box. I did it for this run. It's actually pretty slow. You just want to place one block here, uh, make it master mode, and place the hives right here, uh, like 40 hives or so, maybe a bit, a few more. And uh, this is a pretty slow strat with the box. Just uh, place the hives here. Pointer will take a different amount of time to get to you. And uh, yeah. Uh, so now I'm gonna change the normal mode. I have it have it die to get the grenade launcher and immediately I can spawn the golem because I can reach through the uh, from the bottom to a chest. I loot at the cell. This chest also has a second TV potion. If you really wanna uh, try TV pots, you have two chances. Now we summon the golem on normal difficulty, on, on journey rather. Where he dies, we have a bag. Now I use a conch. I'm not sure if it's random. I think it's random which beach you get uh, first. Uh, it might be like consistent when you do it at a certain time of the run. I'm really not sure. But you want to get the left side obviously because uh, dungeon. Now we freeze time. We summon Skeletron from above. If I didn't get this stuff, I will be using grenade launcher. And uh, now we just fly up. So basically, if you're standing like here, even here, you can fly up with the wings at uh, full height and freeze time, and they're gonna spawn immediately. Uh, so basically, if you placed one block here, for example, you could stand on that, fly up, and you would be high enough, just high enough for them to spawn. So this is a pretty good way of doing it. Now we go around, and we do the consistent power skip. So for this seed, it's pretty simple. You just look for this, uh, there's a slope, there's one proper block, and on this next proper block, you want to start building it. And also another cue that uh, Build Report gives you uh, one extra building uh, reach over a journey. Uh, and with that one extra, I, I believe that's the highest you can build. So even if you don't want to remember, you just find the highest point where you can build and make two boxes out of it down from that and that's enough you don't need to put a block here now I summon him change to master place eight hives here again and I just spam them in the other one so now you see we got uh, ten uh, five stars instead of the usual ten that means the we placed enough bees that only five spawned it's like there's only five uh, NPC entities left and uh, those five stars, they're now capped it, so I can fly up and have the cultists uh, kill, uh, die on the bees. Uh, if he spawned all ten, uh, even though I was placing like relatively fast enough, if he spawns all ten, that means uh, 
they're not 100% capped yet but I can just keep placing a few more hives because with builder pots it's uh, really fast so he does the stars attack he plays like two or three more hives you can still fly up and there's a good chance uh, you will have capped spawns but if he spawns less than 10 then it you know for sure that they're capped uh, but if he doesn't uh, you can still uh, kill him while those stars are on screen uh, if you kill with the stars on screen it's gonna work if there's no stars on screen or and no like purple things another attack that he can do then it's not gonna work and also if you don't get the pure skip to work to the right there's gonna be one pure and you can kill it with bees but that loses quite a bit of time it's easier to just learn this method and have it work consistently I believe I'm gonna do the new attack new method yeah the new Moonlord kill. I placed 12 ropes up. Uh, I believe I placed too few hives here and it took like one extra tick to kill Moonlord. I placed like 62, 62 hives. I think 62 is has like no way of being too many hives and Moonlord will always spawn. And yeah. That, that was the he spawns at 42, he dies at 44. That's the Moonlark fight. And now, I guess I should uh, show around the, with some new strats. Uh, they're kind of a crazy, unlikely route. Uh, let me just hide for a second. Here. Uh, this is a more recent run, it's uh, about 15 seconds faster. And this is a, a route that I would not recommend to pretty much anyone, uh, where I don't get a conch at all, and instead I go for uh, a different world with faster Hermes boots, bombs, and iron. Uh, we need 13 iron to make the uh, crafting bench. So here I spawn, I go loot the boots. Uh, I guess I'll have the seeds for those worlds as well. But really, uh, yeah, I don't recommend this to anyone because there's so many better ways to save time than rely on two TP pots to take you to a dungeon instead of conch. Uh, but this will be quite a bit faster. I looted the uh, iron from another seed and also looted the chest. I throw two bombs, uh, put away my stuff. Now I die, wait for the tombstone to land. It lands. Uh, I switch to the other character. Get the tombstone, loot the chest. Now I have everything and I've also skipped the death animation. Just run the inventory management. Get the grenades in case for the twin glitch. Uh, actually no, it's not for the twin glitch. Uh, it's in case... So in this uh, route I'm gonna be doing, I'm not gonna consistently kill Bow of Flesh and I'm killing grenades just in case it survives with a little bit HP. Uh, now we loot the chest, dig down as I said, so this is a, a route improvement that you can apply to any run, uh, not just this route. Uh, now because I have bones from the other seed, I'm not looting this chest, but if you're doing a conch run, which you should, then you also want to loot this chest for bones. I'm digging down here, get in the TP pot, the first out of the two. And since I didn't dupe um, the tombstone in the desert world, I'm gonna be duping it here. I made sure the tombstone is on 10, uh, or sorry, on the zero slot, place it. The silt goes on the zero slot as well, so I don't have to look for it in the inventory. And uh, that's the tombstone duped. I figured I would explain this as well. Now I'm doing the last bit of inventory management, or many. And this is how I like to do the hives with no scatter bomb. Uh, also useful with the normal route. I fall down here. I place two bombs here. Fly up. Throw the third one here. That should do. That should get you all the hives consistently. And while I'm flying up, I also throw four bombs here. You see all the hives, and usually you will get this little bit of clearance with four bombs, and you can just hook to here and boost to the left instead of having to go around here 
like I did in my other run, I believe. So just go through the top. Again, I place the high walls on hotbars, so I can quickly do that instead of having to craft walls. I boost with the hook a bit. And this is the build that I like to do now. It's the fastest way to build a house. You build a box close enough, just close enough, that you can use it instead of the three platforms for the house. So it's actually part of that house. And now I'm gonna build. Uh, so I, I think I didn't, I didn't use uh, high walls here because I actually didn't get enough uh, actual hives. So I'm gonna have to use all of those walls to craft them into hives to get 25. But usually you get enough, or you can play it a bit more safely. Uh, so. I crafted 6 hive blocks, now I have 25, that's anvil, and also, I like a half a second time save I like to do, to craft the anvil, go out of uh, workbench range, I place it, and now uh, my like, crafting menu is going to be at the bottom instead of at the top, and I just have to scroll up to get the heavy workbench instead of having to click here and look for it, just a little time saves. I place it uh, now the tombstone. There, you need seven to make a graveyard. I don't think I said that before. Now this, I'm gonna put it on holder, and there's a big time save. A very uh, not easy to learn strategy that I'm gonna do right now. Save it, saves a few seconds. I throw a bomb on the guide house. Uh, I fly up and I move him, and it's already night time. That's necessary. Already night time. Uh, I so uh, I leave the. Guide house uh, for a second. Now the guy can move in, and the bomb explodes. He is now in lava. I rebuild the box and change it to master when the wall spawns, and I'm spamming hives. As long as I'm standing here and I start placing them as soon as he dies, as soon as I change to master mode, this, I should be able to sp uh, place enough hives. Uh, so, like, if you uh, mess up your cursor a bit, then you might not place enough. Because it's very precise. So here I killed it in time. And I got to God School. I think here it's going to be the same. I also threw a bomb uh, at the start of this seed. Uh, or as I equipped boots. Start running and threw a bomb. Because in this route. Uh, mm, oh yeah. I, I just have to tr uh, blow up a tree to have enough wood. I'm going to smash the altar. Pick up it with the wood and I'll do mix. I believe everything else is the same. Um, oh yeah, I, I have to use my two TP pots to try and get to temple to to the dungeon. Sorry, if you just run from spawn, it takes like forty seconds to get to the to dungeon. This is a very unlikely route to actually succeed, and we use it to try to get sub six. Me and Afroman uh, at the time of. Recording this video, going through this crazy goal of trying to get under six minutes more north and seated. And yeah, you can really do that with conch. Even if you get a, a really lucky TP pot throw, it's still very tight. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I think that's everything for this for this guide. So if I miss something, is I'm gonna uh, write it in the guides. Again, there's gonna be a link to the uh, to the specific guide for a sp uh, consistent power skip and the fast moonlord kill. Just 12 ropes up in a box. Uh, that will be explained. And as you might have seen, all the bosses were uh, didn't have the normal um, textures. That's the pog pack changes uh, bosses to pog champs. Uh, I guess I could put the link in the guide as well, uh, but if I don't, then you can find it in the speedrun discord, which is also linked on the terrariaspeedrun.com page. You click on discord, you can ask there, and you can download this texture pack. It's allowed for runs, because it just changes bosses. Uh, also, very important, you have to use the 1.4.11 version, which is currently the second latest, uh, to you have to basically down patch to Steam, uh, Steam Depot, to get that uh, earlier version. Or you could just uh, use a Google Drive download for someone who already did it. 
uh, when you download like that the you basically get uh, the game through google drive but you can't run it if you don't have a steam uh, account with terraria uh, a active so yeah you can just uh, have that in a separate folder around the 1.4.1 uh, it's usually has some glitches like it resets achievements every time you start the game also on the uh, steam version so you're gonna have to deal with that possibly uh, as well as the texture packs are reset every time you have to re-enable them but i don't think that always happens just uh, one of the side effects of getting the older version right uh, i think that's everything uh, have fun running the category thank you bye